Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-black life loss deck featuring Rowan, Sign of War, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This 3 mana 4-2 has Menace and can tap, saying spells we cast this turn that are black and or red cost X less to cast, where X is the amount of life we lost this turn and can only use it as a sorcery. So Rowan can potentially give us a huge mana discount to cast some of our expensive spells, as long as we have the life loss to support it. And I've split up the deck into a few different categories. So for a brief rundown, we start out with the cards that can make us lose life, especially cards that can repeatedly lose life are quite valuable alongside Rowan, so we don't need to invest any extra mana into deploying them, so we can immediately make use of that mana discount to cast our more expensive spells. Then we've got some of the more traditional ramp cards, some cheaper artifacts we can deploy early. Those will not get a discount from Rowan's ability, only black and red cards. But then we also have a few ways to generate treasure tokens, and those are actually quite nice if we get the discount from Rowan, since we could potentially end up paying a single mana to draw two cards, make two treasures, which will essentially net us extra mana in the turn that we try to combo off. Then we've got some traditional removal spells to interact with the opponent's game plan, a few ways here to also lose additional life to synergize with Rowan. Then we've got the protection package, a few discard spells and the boots to give hexproof to protect Rowan. And then we've got a bit of life gain as well, some X spells that can gain X life, so those also pair well with a discount from Rowan after we paid a bunch of life, so we can make sure we don't die to the more aggressive decks in the format. And then we get to the actual finishers of the deck, and there's quite a few of them. These can also be used as removal early in the game, but especially once we get a big mana discount from Rowan, we can potentially just point one of these burn spells upstairs at the opponent and close out the game in one shot. And then our mana base also has a few important additions, the pain lands and various lands that make us lose life are quite synergistic with Rowan, since much like the initial category, these are ways to essentially give us a mana discount without needing to invest any additional cards into the turn that we try and combo kill the opponent. So that was the brief rundown, now I'll go a bit deeper for those that are interested, starting with our life loss cards, where we have Bitter Blossom, one of the new enchanting tales, every turn we lose one life to generate a 1-1 flying fairy rogue token. There's Call of the Ring, every turn we could pay 2 life to draw a card and turn one of our creatures into the Ring Bear, can eventually draw and discard with the Ring Bearer as well. Then a Sign and Blood is more of a one-shot effect, we can make a player lose 2 life to draw 2 cards, so usually targeting ourselves, although could also use it to finish off the opponent, and then we can use a 2 life loss as a 2 mana discount for the other spells in our turn. Now of course, colored mana is still going to be a constraint sometimes, so that's why Sign and Blood is not quite as desirable as some of the other enchantments that can passively lose life, so we don't need to invest the initial 2 mana into getting that discount and Stormfist Crusader is one of those. Each turn in our upkeep, each player draws a card and loses one life, so it is symmetrical, also affects the opponent, but we also get a 2-2 menace on top, so that can apply a bit of pressure. There's the Black Market Connections and Phyrexian Arena as enchantments that can also repeatedly lose life to draw cards, especially the Connections is quite powerful with Rowan if we have the life to spare, as we can lose up to 6 life total if we make a treasure, draw a card and create a 3-2 shapeshifter token, so that can turn into at least a 6 mana discount with Rowan. Then there's a Grim Tutor, can lose 3 life to find any card in our deck, so that can also potentially find one of our finishers after already having gotten a big mana discount. We've got Necropotence as another enchanting tales from Wilds of Eldraine, and this is potentially the most powerful enabler in this deck for Rowan, as we can pay one life at will, and then exile the top card of our library face down, eventually draw that card, does come at the cost of skipping our draw step, and whenever we discard a card we have to exile it. So this is one of those cards that at first glance may not seem all that amazing, but for those that have already played Magic for a while, you'll know how powerful Necropotence can be. And of course in this deck we can turn all our life into extra mana base, basically with Rowan, turning this Necropotence almost into a channel-like effect, and then we can easily close out the game with a burn spell. Let's say we have 25 life, we can spend 24 of it drawing cards with Necropotence, get a 24 mana discount, and then a burn spell can potentially deal 25 damage to just one-shot the opponent if we've got a bit more mana to spare. Then there's Staff of Completion, can pay life in various increments to maybe make mana, proliferate or draw a card. There's the One Ring, which can initially protect us, and then can also turn into a card draw engine, where we can incrementally draw more cards and lose more life. 
And then a Doom Whisper, similar to Necropotence, is another way to lose life at will. Can pay two life each time to surveil two, so it can also dig towards one of our finishers. Bolas of Citadel can also exchange our life total for cards of the top of our deck. Then there's Villas, which can reward us for losing life as we get to draw a card each time, and can also enable its own ability by paying two life to give a creature minus one, minus one until end of turn. And then a Gristle Brand, a nice 7-7 seven, seven Flying Lifelink, can pay 7 life to draw 7 cards. So that can also give us a 7 mana discount, although if we already have a Gristle Brand in play we're probably doing alright. Although Gristle Brand and Villas alike are also cards we can potentially ramp into using Rowan's ability initially, as long as we have enough black mana to cast them after getting a nice discount. Then we've got the more traditional ways of accelerating our mana. Dark Ritual can set up some explosive starts. We've got the usual 2 mana ramp artifact. And then a Burgi can also be quite nice the turn we try and combo off with a bunch of spells that get a discount from Rowan, as now we get to add a red mana every time we cast a spell. Could also end up casting the Horn of Bounty, which can also give us a source of extra card advantage. And then we've got uh, Treasure Makers, Big Score and Pirate's Pillage can potentially turn a single red mana into two extra cards and two treasures after discarding, so those can also be very nice when we combo off. And then uh, Chandra is also quite powerful, can often take out a creature when it comes down, and then afterwards we can still use it to generate extra mana. Goldspan Dragon, also quite synergistic with the author Treasure Makers, can now sack a treasure to make two mana, can generate treasures when attacking or when targeted, so it's back to its original form. And then a Brass's Bounty may not seem like a very impressive card at first glance. Seven mana, and then for each land we control, create a treasure token. So let's say we ramped into it with one of our artifacts. We could cast it for seven mana and maybe only make six treasure tokens. And then we can hopefully use those on the following turn to do something powerful. But of course, the best use case is where we have a Rowan in play, giving us maybe a three or four mana discount. And then now we can cast a three mana Brass's Bounty, making six or seven treasure tokens. And that can potentially convert some of that colorless mana into additional colored mana so we can keep casting more spells from our hand. And then in our removal section we've got the classics, Fatal Push and Lightning Bolt. Feed this form has excellent synergy with Rowan since it can lose us more life that can turn into extra mana. And then we've got the Instant Speed, Go for the Throat, Heartless Act and even Infernal Grasp which can also lose two life. And then the Bowmaster is great at taking out one toughness creatures from the opponent, can punish opposing card draw, but can also set up some two card combos in our own deck. If we combine it with Peer into the Abyss for instance and target the opponent, we can make them draw a ton of cards, which will then also deal a lot of damage with Bowmasters to win the game on the spot. Then there's a Braid, can take out opposing artifacts or deal 3 damage. And then a Virtue of Persistence can also be a nice mana sink after first using the Adventure to maybe kill a creature and gain 2 life. And life gain is always appreciated, does not impact the amount of discount we get from Rowan. Let's say we lost 3 life and gain 2, we can still get a 3 mana discount from Rowan, so that doesn't matter. And then the Enchantment can also potentially help us reanimate some creatures. Then we've got cut two ribbons, can first take out a creature with a 4 damage, and then later the aftermath from the graveyard can also be a finisher. After getting a big discount we can make the opponent lose X life. And then Orcus we can also sink additional mana into, so quite nice alongside Rowan's discount. Can potentially be a sweeper, giving all creatures minus X minus X until end of turn, and we lose X life. But we can also use it to return creatures from our graveyard to the battlefield and give them haste. So it could even reanimate a Rowan with it, and then immediately activate the mana discount. And then we continue with our protection package, where we've got Duress, Inquisition and Thoughtseize as early discard spells to maybe take away opposing removal. And then the boots for Hexproof to protect Rowan and immediately activate it. And then we continue with some of our life gain effects. Shieldred can also set up some two card combos in this deck alongside our Peer into the Abyss for instance. And of course with all the cards we're drawing it's nice to be able to gain some life back. Then there's Exquisite Blood, which can also turn that damage into additional life gain, so we can keep using the various life loss effects. Then we usually have quite a bit of Black Devotion built up to drain the opponent with Grey Merchant and gain that much life. And as you'll notice, a lot of our permanents are black. Most of the red cards are some of the burn spells to close out the game, so Grey Merchant is still excellent here despite being a two-color deck. And then Professor Onyx can also gain more life with a passive ability whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, making the opponent lose two as well. The plus one gives us more card advantage, while the minus three can be removal. And then both Erebos' Intervention and March of a Wretched Sorrow can be excellent mana sinks, gaining us that much life in the process. 
And then we get to our finishers, where we already mentioned Peer into the Abyss a few times. Can be both used on ourselves to lose a lot of life, give us an even bigger mana discount, or we can use it on the opponent in combination with the Bowmasters or Shieldred to end the game on the spot. Then the Hoarding Broodlord can enter as a nice 7-6 flyer that can tutor up another card. We're not the best at enabling Convoke since we don't have a ton of creatures, but if we get a big enough discount from Rowan we can still make it work, and then a tutor up our next finisher. And then Apex of Power can also be very fun when we make it work, especially with a big discount, as we'll then get to exile the top 7 cards of our library, and until end of turn we may cast spells from among them, and if it was cast from our hands we get to add 10 mana of any one color, so it doesn't matter that we cast Apex of Power for maybe 5 or 6 mana with a big enough discount, we'll still get 10 mana in addition to the discount from Rowan, so we'll often be able to cast every spell that we exiled with Apex of Power. Then we've got some of our finishing burn spells. Banefire is uncounterable, damage cannot be prevented. Devil's Play can also be flashed back from our graveyard. Then Sheevan Devastator can sometimes be better than a burn spell if we're not killing the opponent in one shot, since we'll still have a large flying creature left over that can attack the opponent on the following turn, but there are situations where the opponent can take it out before it hits them. And then we've got the Song of Tottentons, which instead of going big with one single creature, goes wide with a lot of 1-1 rats that cannot block, so that can also be a way of closing out the game over the course of two turns. And then there's Torment of Hailfire, one of my favorites. We can uh, repeat the following process x times. Each opponent loses 3 life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. So usually the goal with Torment of Hailfire is to cast it for enough mana where the opponent is going to run out of non-land permanents to sacrifice and cards to discard, and they'll eventually end up just losing the game to Torment of Hailfire. Then there's Crackle with Power, can also be an excellent mana sink that can target multiple things. There's Electrodominance, which can let us cast another spell from our hand for free. And then Jaya's Immolating Inferno does require a legendary creature or planeswalker in play before we can cast the legendary sorcery, but can also be more efficient than some of the other burn spells when taking out multiple things at once. And then we've got quite a few lands that can make us lose life to synergize with Rowan. The castle requires a pretty big upfront investment, but can make us lose a lot of life at once if we have enough cards in hand. And then we've got the pain lands and the various deserts here that can tap for colorless if we don't have a Rowan in play or don't want to lose life. But then once we have Rowan in play, we can tap them for colored mana at the cost of one life, so that can potentially set up an even bigger discount. So always make sure to tap as many of these as possible if we want to get a bigger discount before activating Rowan. And then there's also Ramana Pruins. These also have other various effects, but we rarely end up using them. Them. Mount Doom, a more recent pain land that can also potentially synergize with cards like the One Ring, which we could maybe sacrifice alongside it. Then there's Sulphurous Springs, a more classic pain land, and then Mana Confluence will always cost us one life if we tap it for mana. Then Blood Crypt can be played untapped at the cost of 2 life, so unlike your typical decks where you often want to play Blood Crypt tapped in the early turns to avoid life loss, we often want to hold Blood Crypt as long as possible so we can combine it with Rowan to get a bigger discount. And the same is true for Shatter Skull Smashing, which can be played as the Hammer Pass at the cost of 3 life, and the Agadim's Awakening slash the Under Crypt, which can also lose us 3 life and give us at least a 3 mana discount. And then the rest of our lands, kind of your typical red-black mana fixers, and a few additional utility lands here. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Toski, and our hand's pretty nice. Cold Steel Hearts on two, and then we could already play a turn three Necropotence. Although probably best to get a Rowan in play as soon as possible. And then Mono Green should not have access to a ton of removal. Can even go Arcane Signet plus Rowan in the same turn. Opponent's got four mana here. And plays out Toski. Yeah, let's go Signet plus Rowan. And then next turn we can maybe go for Necropotence. And then still have mana for a go for the throats. And then we can eventually pay a bunch of life to get a huge discount. So blocking here is a little bit risky in the face of a pump spell. If our opponent played Toski on turn 3 here, it kind of implied that they had something to get past Ruin, otherwise they probably would have played something else. And I don't think the... One extra card's gonna make that much of a difference. 
Okay, a shy ass next. So do we actually have lethal here? If we play Necropotence, paying 23 life, we'll get a 23 mana discount. And then we should have enough mana to Banefire for 25. Could also cast Big Score before casting Banefire. Just to give us an extra mana, basically, since we'll cast it for a single red. Crackle with Power probably deals even more damage than Banefire, since X equals 5 is already 25 damage and we can easily pay 17 mana, but I'm still gonna go with the original Banefire here. Yeah, this is not how I imagined winning a game of magic. Just Necropotence, deal myself 23 damage. But here we are. It's a shame I'll never get to find out what cards we would have drawn here. Okay, activate Ruin. Cast Big Score, discarding, go for the throw, it is fine. And then Banefire, X equals 25 will suffice. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is not the best, lacking some early ramp or interaction, facing a Grixis deck, so can expect quite a bit of interaction from the opponent. This hand has an Infernal Grasp. Still not that amazing, lots of expensive cards that we're potentially unable to cast if our opponent answers Rowan. Alright, this is better. I think we ditch Devastator and just keep the card draw engines and the lions to go with them. Doubt we'll find a target for Fatal Push early. Play another Swamp on the off chance that we need to cast a turn 3 Necropotence. And then Phyrexian Arena probably getting countered. But then we could follow up with a One Ring, which may or may not resolve. Missing double red for Chandra. Chandra could also answer their 2-4. Cycles a Shark Typhoon just to hit her land drop perhaps and fails to do so. So we can resolve the one ring which sounds like a pretty nice play here. I'll hang on to Abandon Mire just in case. And then I'll probably wait to draw. Although if our opponent had a discard effect, we're protected by the One Ring, so that's not a concern. Shark is going to find out the powers of our One Ring. And we'll get to draw here. Now resolving Rowan still going to be a bit of a challenge. Still missing the second red for Chandra, so let's start here. Alright, there's our second red. So could give Chandra a try. Unlikely to work. Can still Fatal Push the Shark at the very least. And then next turn we can try and double spell. Seems okay. This Daneful Stroke. Fair enough. I guess we'll wait on killing the Shark. Not in a hurry. I'll just do it now. Our life total will certainly be a resource when we have a one ring and plenty of life loss in hand. Torment of Hailfire. So yeah, getting to untap with Rowan is going to be quite challenging. Could Grim Tutor get a discard spell just to try and mess with the opponent's hand a little bit and see what they're working with so we can make a more informed decision later. Could play Grim Tutor and play Rowan. And then expect Rowan to die, but then next turn we can replay it and maybe play a discard spell alongside it as well. So I think we start with Grim Tutor. Which may or may not resolve. An offer you can't refuse, so at least we'll get some treasure here. Yeah, I'll play Rowan. 
again, probably gets countered or killed here. This is also unlikely to stick around. But uh, got to try and use our mana advantage. So for now, no removal. But a stasis field to shut it down. That's even more annoying than just killing it, since now we'll have to essentially take it out ourselves to get access to the ability. Or we have to find some other way to win the game, which is possible. So do I activate the one ring? I'm hesitant, so let's just take our draw step. For now we can sign in blood draw too. Could also set up a reasonably large torment. Deadlands can only put minus one counters on opposing creatures, so can't take out Rowan Rowan with it. Okay, Thoughtseize is good. And then we can still call of the ring if we'd like. Although this wouldn't be attacking even as a ring bearer. Yeah, our life total's ticking down pretty fast. Might have to draw with the one ring here. See what else we find. Goldspan Dragon's a good one. So I could Thought Seize to try and take away an answer for Goldspan Dragon and try and connect. And then extra mana from the treasures here would also be helpful. Okay, opponent's got Wash Away, which does not work on my Goldspan Dragon. Go for the throw to Wood. So I think that's what we take here. The only clean answer to Goldspan Dragon. And then we can try and leverage this mana advantage that the dragon generates. And potentially set up a lethal Torment of Hailfire anyways. Even though we'll have to fight through a few counter spells. Could consider playing Call of the Ring now, since we have a creature we can actually turn into a ring bearer. Although we're losing quite a bit of life between the ring and Call of the Ring now too. Opponent taps out for double vision. So yeah, coast is clear to do whatever we want. So we could probably win the game if I just attack with Goldspan Dragon and cast a huge Torment of Hailfire. But with Orcus, we have access to a pretty interesting line where we kill our own Rowan with Heartless Act, use Orcus to get back Rowan, since we did not send it back to the command zone, and then it will enter the battlefield with haste, so it can immediately tap to give us a huge mana discount, and then we can maybe figure out a way to cast a lethal Torment of Hailfire. That seems more fun. So, destroy Rowan. Make sure not to send it back to the command zone. Then we can attack with Goldspan. Then make sure to lose life with the Deadlands. Could also draw with the one ring. But uh, yeah, let's do a little bit of math. So Orcus X equals 3. Can use our treasures. Get back Rowan with haste. So life loss currently at six. So I can draw with the one ring. See if we find a land that deals me some more damage. I guess we can see what else we find. And Pirate's Pillage is actually awesome here, as it will generate a lot of extra mana thanks to Goldspan Dragon and the discount. So it's one mana to get plus four mana and draw two. Necropotence. But we've already used Rowan's ability, so any additional life loss is not going to help. So... If I were to Torment of Hailfire here... How much are we talking about? So 6 plus 6 is 12, so x equals 10. Okay, 
So three cards they can discard. One non-land permanent they can sacrifice. And the rest is going to be three life loss each time, which should be just enough here. All right, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Zimon and Dina. Sultai, Sacrifice. Our hand is missing red mana. Otherwise, it has some nice things going for it. Early discard to check for removal. Bitter Blossom and Call of the Ring for life loss. And I guess Bitter Blossom provides a creature for Call of the Ring, so we can get those going, even if we're missing red mana for a while. So I'll give it a shot. Turn 3, we can Mind Stone plus Call of the Ring. So that still works nicely. And solve the equation. So looks like a version that's trying to cheat Emergent Ultimatum into play and solve the equation a way to get it. We'll see. Turn 2 Visionary, turn 3 Z Moon. And in the meantime, we'll get our Bitter Blossom going. And Grim Tutor. Don't really want to use it to get a Mountain if I can help it. Can maybe use it to get Necropotence if we get Rowan in play first. So for now, Mind Stone, Call of the Ring. Opponent seems to have picked up a Pact of Negation since they're pausing on every play I make. So that's going to make it even harder to combo kill them once they get to 5 mana. Which they'll probably get next turn. Okay, go for the throat and answer to Zimon and Dina. That's good. So I think that's my whole turn for now. And hit for one. And then now we've got the red mana for Rowan. I'll take a Blood Crypt, I think. So next turn I can play Rowan and Grim Tutor. And then try and set up the win on the following turn, or at least something powerful. Still have to worry about a Pact of Negation, but now our opponent's on 4 mana, so they may not be able to pay for Pact. I'll switch up the Ring Bearer, just so every fairy can experience it. Okay, so play Rowan. Could get countered in a variety of ways. But I'll start there. And then I guess we can also draw and discard with a fairy token. And then Blood Crypt could go. Probably don't need triple red. Could also save this to give Rowan a mana discount next turn, of course. Kind of depends what we're planning to do with Grim Tutor, if it resolves. I guess that's fine. So deal two. And let's Tutor. That also resolves. Okay, so next turn I'll lose one, two, three, four, five life. So if Rowan sticks around, that's a five mana discount. So just getting another finisher along the lines of Sheevan Devastator could be good enough. So a Banefire, which is uncounterable, is maybe not a bad choice. So even if they have a counterspell, we'll still get a little bit of damage through. Could be that Song is better, since at least it will keep some rat tokens in play to close out the game. But uh, let's try Banefire. Find a big score and a Villas. Okay, so we're certainly working with some decent options. So lose two. Activate Rowan. So now I could play a one mana big score. Could play Villas for just triple black. 8-8 eight, eight flyer isn't bad. 
Although I'm tempted to just big score discard Villas, and then we can still cast a big Devastator and maybe a Banefire to close out the game. Ooh, nice Grey Merchant for two mana. That's gonna help. So, do we start there? Crackle would also be nice to resolve. I'll start with a Grey Merchant. Drain for five. And then Devastator. I could play for five. Just tapping a single red source. Opponent considering a Pact of Negation here. And they actually went for it. So opponent's going to be forced to pay 5 next turn. And then we could still Crackle. X equals 2. Zemon down. And then attack for 3, and then still cast a Banefire for 6, which would have been just enough for lethal here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Iluna. This is often built as an Omniscience combo deck that just tries to mutate onto a token, and then they're guaranteed to hit Omniscience. Our hand is reasonable, uh, missing a third black source for Necropotence, but Necropotence is pretty strong alongside Rowan. And then we've got a few finishers to choose from. Opponent with the crossroads. Now what we don't have is a lot of instant speed removal. I guess Electro Dominance could be cast to take out a smaller token early on. But yeah, our opponent's essentially going to mutate for 6 mana onto a token and then find Omniscience that way. At least that's how most Iluna decks are built nowadays. Could play a one ring, which is not bad. And then wait a little bit on Rowan. This may get countered, of course. It's gonna be a Verdant command making tokens. Okay. So don't need to worry about taking damage from the squirrels. And then once our opponent gets to 6 mana, we'll have to keep up instant speed removal to kill the token they try and mutate onto. So they don't actually get to combo off. Because if they get Omniscience down, it's probably game over. Okay, Boots can help protect a Rowan. And they could certainly have a bit of spot removal here. So let me start by activating one ring. Okay, found black mana, so I could play Necropotence, play Boots. If our opponent has a ram spell at instant speed, they could get up to 5 mana next turn, so we're still not quite in danger. And then I could play Rowan, equip with boots, and try and do something. Seems reasonable enough. So we'll start with Necropotence, that resolved swiftly. And play the boots. And then I'm not gonna use Necropotence just yet. We've got a lot of life loss and card draw. So I'm not going to miss my draw step too much. Take two. And do we see a ramp card? No, we do not. Okay, so... Now what? We could... Uh, activate the one ring for starters. Finding a Thought Seize, that's helpful. So if I were to Thought Seize, I can still play Rowan Equip and then have one colored mana left, which is not enough to cast any of our finishers. So I think we have to wait another turn to combo. I could still Thought Seize in the meantime, just to make sure Rowan resolves and then next turn combo off. Okay, opponent's holding a big score, which they can cast here to ramp. Don't care about clear the mind, the duration's fine. Urza's command also doesn't really bother me. 
and Hour of Promise. So I think we take Big Score, which is the only way they could guarantee mutates Iluna next turn. And then, yeah, the coast is clear for Rowan, equip the boots. And then I guess since we're not using Rowan this turn, we can also play Iron Crag. And I'm not going to be transforming it here. And then next turn I should have the win if our opponent doesn't top deck anything. Since we'll be able to lose all the life we need to set up a huge Torment of Hailfire. Or uh, can maybe go off with Bolas of Citadel, we'll see. Opponent going for Constructs and draw card. The Power Stone would not help them mutate Iluna, so that wasn't a concern. Hour of Promise, their opponent will be tapped out. And then we should be good to go. Torment of Hailfire repeats following process X time. I'll lose three unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. So they wouldn't be able to make any zombies since they didn't have deserts in play. And then they'll have three tokens, four cards in hand, so that's seven. I guess now with Colony Garden they have four tokens, so eight things that they can get rid of before they start losing a life. So I need basically x equals 18 to be able to kill them. And yeah, I think that's feasible. So can just draw with the one ring and then activate Necropotence a bunch. Shadow Skull Smashing can lose more life, although with Necropotence life loss is not really a limiting factor. So can go all the way. And then Torment for x equals 18 should be lethal. Could have also tried to go off with Bolas of Citadel here, but again, life loss is not a limiting factor. So I think Torment of Hailfire is the most straightforward way to do it. Immolating Inferno could also deal a lot of damage, but not quite enough for lethal. Okay, activate Ruin. And then if I float all my mana... So it could do X equals 20, still have some leftover mana. I guess 23 would have been ideal. So our opponent's going to lose life down to one, and then they'll start sacrificing tokens and discarding cards. But as they'll find out, they don't quite have enough to survive. All the tokens disappearing before our very eyes. One squirrel remains. And our opponent will have to take themselves out here. Down to minus eight. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Velomachus Lorehold, so kind of a red-white control deck. Feed the Swarm can deal with enchantments, but we probably need to deal with artifacts that help the opponent ramp early on. Chandra may not have a lot of targets early, so not loving this hand. This is a bit better. We've got the Iron Crank for ramp, Bowmasters can maybe punish some card draw. So I'll give it a shot. And then the extra token from Bowmasters is also helpful with Convoke. I'll keep Mountain on top. May need another Swamp if they answer Bowmasters to cast our Brutelord. So turn two. I guess we'll go for Iron Crank over Bowmasters. And then next turn we could potentially double spell. Opponent had the braid, that's too bad. 
can still play Ruin, and then now they're less likely to remove it. Could also Mind Stone plus Bowmasters now, which I don't hate. Don't actually have a lot of ways to lose life to enable Rowan's ability, so may as well distract them with the uh, Bowmasters in the meantime. It's gonna be a Ruin Blaster kicked to take out one of our lands, that's too bad. Okay, at least Bowmasters can take it out. Castle under stamped, so we're not doing much at this turn. Don't want to sack Mindstone. Opponent up to 5 mana, so 2 away from Velomachus. And it's going to be a Primal Amulet. That can eventually turn into a scary land, copying their spells. Summit's a nice draw, so we can play Rowan, and then next turn we're looking at a Convoked Broodlord, hopefully. Our Devastation, that's gonna wipe our board, sadly. Okay, so goodbye Rowan, can just replay it next turn. Call of the Ring gives us a source of life loss to give Rowan a discount. But for now, just replay it. A rip apart kills Rowan once again. So, probably not happening this game. At least we've got a backup plan. It's just going to cost us a lot of mana without any creatures in play. So your opponent could play Velomachus next turn. If I pitch a black card to March, we could take it out. So that may be the plan. So I need X equals 5, which I guess I can do without pitching. Or we can get rid of a Fatal Push, which doesn't seem all that great, and then in the meantime deploy the Boots, which can maybe protect Ruin next time we play it. There's Velomachus, but it's not going to get a chance to attack. Now our opponent will know how it feels. Fatal push gone. Back up to 30. And a big score. Okay, so we can ditch Call of the Ring. Don't think I'll need Mindstone. And then happy to just hit my land drop for the turn. And then next turn we could cast Broodlord. Not sure yet what we're gonna exile with it. Solvent can go after our Virtue of Persistence if we were to cast it, and they're actually going after my land now. Could activate Castle, but don't want to waste my treasures. So that's fine. So now we don't need to worry about it taking care of my creatures or enchantments. Brass's bounty, not the best right now. After opponent destroyed two of our lands. So instead go for Brute Lord. And then we could get an Abrade to destroy Primal Amulets. Which is maybe a little bit lame. I could get something big like an Apex of Power. Gristlebrand, we're pretty far from casting without treasure. Only a single black, so casting a citadel is going to be hard. So most of the fun cards I'm unable to cast. Could try Goldspan Dragon, I suppose. Or a Planeswalker like Chandra is harder for them to interact with. Could one ring to draw a lot of cards, which is also an option. Pona still pretty far from casting Velomachus, but yeah, transforming Primal Amulet is certainly a concern. So can either get a braid to take care of it, or something like a one ring to pull ahead on cards. 
Let's try one ring. And this is also a source of life loss to enable ruin. Going to go to Sunfall, thanks to my Broodlord, and then Amulets is uh, ready to transform here. One more weaponry will do it. So now they can copy their spells, they got to make a treasure and transform a lane, so next turn they can Velomachus me. But at least we'll have a one ring protecting us. So the game goes on. And I go for the throw, it's the perfect answer. And one one token's acceptable. We can protect Rowan with the boots if we have eight mana total. Which next turn we might. Okay. Velomac is down, and we still have a one ring to hopefully pull us ahead. They might have a way to exile the one ring, otherwise it's pretty difficult to interact with. So let's draw, hope to find an untapped land. Good Inquisition, could just play row and equip, hope they don't have a sweeper. Casting Virtue does not get back our Dragon which got exiled, so we'll just go for Bowmasters, not too exciting. So a row and activate seems reasonable. Gives me a 1-mana discount right away, which I can't really use. But at least it's safe from spot removal, and then now we could attack. And then with the 1 ring losing life, Rowan gives us a substantial discount, so we can try and set up some of our powerful cards. Opponent's gonna copy their next spell with the Primal Wellspring and burn down the house. Yep, that's a sweeper. Goes for Devils instead. Fair enough. And a birth. Yeah, when uh, choosing a mode here, they're forced to choose the same mode twice with a copy, so they couldn't go Devils plus Sweeper, so that's maybe what they were trying to figure out. Well, we're still facing an army of devils, which can hit us pretty hard. And then next turn we could see Velomachus once again. For now, start by drawing. Should have considered even activating the One Ring before the trigger resolved, just to lose an extra point of life. Okay, so only a 2 mana discount here. What's next? Brass's Bounty does generate additional mana, so that's potentially effective. I can gain some life with the 2 mana Adventure. Do we have Lethal with a Immolating Inferno? I doubt it. Putting still at 17, so we're a bit off. Could try and get Villas in play using the discount. And then if they hit us with the Devils we can draw a ton of cards. Don't hate that idea. So, could also Inquisition them. Maybe start there. Could also move the boots onto Villas. Opponent's got a double vision in hand, good to know about. So, play Villas. And then we could protect it. And then if one Devil dies, it's still only one damage on Rowan. So not enough to take it out. Okay, so it could hit for 8, or we can just hang back on defense. I guess our opponent's still going to be 1 mana short of replaying Velomachus, costing 11 total. So we should be safe enough to attack with Villas here, and then only take 7 damage on the way back. And then next turn with Emulating Inferno, we should easily be able to win the game. Brass's Bounty could also give us a massive mana boost to potentially empty the rest of our hand. And that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Radagast, the brown, a green ramp deck. Our hand is 
lacking a bit of oomph. We don't have any life loss to really get us a huge discount, which is what we need to combo off. Bowmaster is not at its best against Radagast since it's not actually card draw. So take a mulligan. This is better. We've got a few ways to lose life. Bitter Blossom, the Pain Lines. Turn to Cold Steel Heart. So I want to hang on to Awakening until after we play Roan, ideally, so we can get a 3 mana discount that turn. Turn 1 Elves is scary. Necropotence, that's a powerful card in this deck. So turn to Cold Steel Heart. Do we name Black or Red? If I name Black, it's going to be easier for Necropotence. So, yeah, let's uh, name Black and then I can use Ruins for Red Mana. Probably still want to play Rowan first anyway. But then with a song alongside a huge discount from Necropotence, we could set up something powerful. Opponent's off to a good start. And a Devastator's next. Okay, play Rowan. Yeah, in hindsight, if I had named a red, I can save myself one damage. And then with Awakening, I could still play Necropotence, but now I can save myself three damage, since Necropotence can lose all the life we need. So it's a bit redundant here. Opponent's got a Radagast, two mana floating, thanks to Castle Garenbrig. And Kogla is pretty scary. So we gotta make something happen right now, but I think we can. I don't have enough life to just straight up kill the opponent here, so I need to find kind of the sweet spot between dealing enough damage to threaten lethal next turn without putting myself dead on the way back. Could also make a lot of rats and go wide. It's harder for the opponent to interact with most likely. So I think that's going to be the play here. So let me play Necropotence. Tamp this for red. And then just activate for a bunch. How much exactly? So we can expect the opponent to hit us back for at least 4 damage. Let's say they've got a questing beast in hand, 8 damage. So I'm gonna try and keep myself at 9 life. And then we'll see if that would be enough, theoretically. So this would be song for x equals 14. Opponent blocks two of them, takes 12, so that's nowhere near enough. So I don't think we can play around Questing Beast here. So I'm going to leave myself at 5 life. So x equals 19. And attack. And hope they don't have any pump spells or haste creatures, pretty much. If I had an extra red source, then I could have both gone for the rats and the Shivan Devastator. So if we had used Cold Steel on red, then I can play Awakening untapped and then go for both Devastator and Song. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Bones at 8, we've got 18 rats and we'll have to discard to hand size. Keep 7, Intervention, Electrodominance, Virtue. We have ways of gaining life, peer into the abyss maybe, Devastator, and then a couple of lands. Intervention would have been nice to just gain all that life right back. So now the moment of truth, are we dead? It's 
It's gonna be Nissa, Ascended Animist. With three forests in play, they can ultimate, and that does it. Alright, GG's. Opponent found a way. One more life and we survive this. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Goose Mother, Blue-Green Ramp. My hand's pretty nice. We've got an early Crusader, Dark Ritual could set up some powerful turns, and then Bowmasters to maybe take out a Mana Elf. Not gonna Dark Ritual on turn one, so we'll just play this tapped. Sometimes it's worth it to hang on to these to play once we have a Rowan down to give us kind of a three mana discount. In this case, we've got Crusader as kind of our life loss engine. And uh, keeping our life total high could still be useful later. So I'll play Crusader. And then Dark Ritual could maybe ramp out Villas, especially in combination with a discount from Ruin. Incubation Druid at 2 Toughness will survive Bowmasters. Bowmasters plus Crusader is also kind of a combo. Opponent draws an extra card, we can deal an extra damage. So for now this will enter tapped. So we'll just play Rowan and hit for two. And then next turn, with the mana discount, it's going to be easier to empty my hand and answer a bunch of mana creatures, perhaps. Opponent with a Cyclonic Rift to bounce Rowan, that's too bad. Just have to try again next turn. Could have considered putting a stop to cast the Bowmasters before Crusader uh, triggered. And now is a time for Dark Ritual. Opponent could still have blue mana up for a counter spell. So if we cut Incubation Druid, then the coast is clear for Rowan after a Dark Ritual, which I don't mind. And then I guess what we're lacking is more life loss at the moment to really get going with Rowan. But we'll figure it out. Okay, coast is clear. Pass a turn. Just a 4 4 Goose Mother. And a Bitter Blossom. So we only have one life loss this turn. Still good for a 1 mana discount which seems worthwhile. And then it's about time we get this Orcish Bowmasters in play. Plus Bitter Blossom could also Electro Dominance X equals 3 and then put in Bowmasters to finish off Goose Mother, which is an option. Yeah, that's uh, certainly reasonable. And then now we have Bowmasters in play. And we can continue leveraging Rowan. And Vorinclex is a pretty big blocker. Crusader triggers. So does Bowmasters. Now I can damage myself to get a bigger discount. And I don't hate it. Find the Iron Crag. So we've got a 2 mana discount at most this turn. So if we were to use it, I essentially have access to uh, my 7 drops. So I could cast Brass's Bounty, make 5 treasure, and then still have 2 mana discount on everything. Doesn't really lead anywhere too amazing, but we could use a discount to intervention, kill Vorinclex, and keep attacking. So that seems good enough for now. X equals 6. Just enough here. Hit for 5. Bonus down to 10 in the meantime. 
and then uh, finding another one of these lands that makes me lose three life would actually be pretty strong. And this side is next. Two forests in play. They also have a food token that could gain three. And it's going to be a tapped breeding pool. Could have been another forest here for Nissa. So not animating a forest, only access to one blue or green mana. Okay, where does the damage go? Probably upstairs. We've got six menace damage coming in. And now a gold span as well. So that should just be game over if we play gold span and it resolves. Yeah, let's just go face. Could activate Rowan, but I don't really see the point. And that does it. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Zabaz, so red-white artifact. Our hand has potential. Even have some cheap removal. And then Crusader to enable Rowan initially. Go for the throat may not be at its best in this matchup. Although I'm sure opponents still have some non-artifact creatures in there. Skrelv's Hive, a steady supply of artifact creatures. So I could take out Zabaz now. And then next turn maybe go Signet plus Crusader, turn after, play Rowan. At least now they don't have a place to put the modular plus one counter. So it feels like a good time to take out Zabaz. Orcus could also come down to wipe the board of all 1-1 tokens. Bones got a staff of completion, can proliferate those plus one counters. Okay, play Signets, play Crusader looks good. And then next turn, Ruin. Turn after we could have a decent mana discount potentially. Opponent could also pay a life to draw, although they're about to only pay one life. Also losing a life with a hive. They could also proliferate the poison to gain lifelink a little bit sooner. Opponent goes for Mindstone. If they replay Zabaz, we could just Orcus X equals 1 next turn. Then they could proliferate with a staff to make this up to a 2-2. Two -two. It's going to be a Reign of Truth instead. Fair enough. So that's going to hit pretty hard. But now I'm not opposed to Orcus X equals 1. Or we can get Rowan down. Glass Casket deals with Crusader. Okay. So, yeah, with Orcus we at least mitigate the effectiveness of Chapter 2. And then next turn we can get our commander in play, hopefully. Gonna be a Lodestone Golem next. Non artifacts cost one more to cast. It's pretty effective against us. Can't take it out with Go for the Throat. So I have to decide if I want to play Phyrexian Arena or Rowan. And I guess Rowan makes sense. Pass a turn. So Zabas could. Essentially move its counter onto the golem, and then it could also proliferate, although that would still trade for Orcus. So we'll see what happens. There's also Karn's Bastion, which could also proliferate. So there's a few ways this could go. So if they attack with a golem, they could essentially put three plus one counters on it, making it an eight-six between Zabaz, Staff, and Karn's Bastion. Opponent only sending a 1-1, one, one. in which case we could take it. Does mean if they proliferate, then they would gain lifelink on all the toxic creatures, which includes their mites. But if I block what happens, opponent can 
move two counters onto it pretty easily and trade. We lose Orcus. Is that acceptable? Not really. Bones at 11, so 5 powered flyer can do some damage. Although, Bones has got some scary threats here. Portrait and 9 9. Gardens can copy an artifact, including glass caskets, which could take out Rowan once again. Put on copying Lodestone Golem instead. So we're extra taxed now. At least go for the throat can take out portraits, so there's that. But that's about all I can do here. And then if we kill portraits, can Rowan attack? Opponent can double block. I don't think that ends well for me with Staff of Completion in the mix. So I'm just gonna send Orcus. And then next turn maybe with a song we can close out the game, although I'm not counting on it. Especially with a double lodestone tax. Opponent will fall to three. To proliferate. So mites have lifelink. Bones at two. And they're gonna send in everyone except Zabaz. Nope, Zabaz gets in there too. So I may as well block a lodestone golem here. Since we're Relying pretty heavily on Orcus to win us the game. Ponon doesn't have a reason to make a move with Zabaz since they have a lethal. But now we might see a response. They could move some plus one counters onto the lifelinker to try and survive. Ponon draws with Mindstone. Portrait down. Trade happens, so now our song is also a bit more effective with only one lodestone in play. And they're currently still dead to Orcus. Bone and proliferates. We're at 6 poison. Proliferate up to 7. And we should have lethal here. Song X equals 5. And smash. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Quandrix, upgraded into a 5-5 Flying Trample, still dies to go for the throat. Our hand seems decent enough. We've got a Pain Land to synergize with Rowan, and now Agadim's Awakening could give us a 3 mana discount all of a sudden. A few early removal spells with Bolt and go for the throat. So, hopefully Rowan can stick around. So put onto a plus one counter deck. Can Signet plus Bolt. Not sure yet if I bother killing Colony. Opponent with a replicating ring. Alright, let's just bolt Colony now. It does attack past Ruin, and the damage is gonna add up. So now we can play Ruin, play. Ruins, and then next turn play the Untapped Awakening to hopefully uh, cheat out something expensive. So I would get a 4 mana discount between the 4 life lost. So that should help me cast Villas. And then Villas plus Ruins is also pretty nice. Opponent with a Nadir Kraken, that's acceptable. Alright, let's stick to the plan. Activate Rowan after paying a life. 4 mana discount enabled. Play Villas. And then we could still Bane Fire. X equals 4, kill Nadir Kraken. There's a chance our opponent's got a protection spell here. Could keep Bane Fire as a finisher. Although now we don't have as much life loss to go with it. So 
So I guess we'll make them uh, use a protection spell if they have one. And then we'll still have a go for the throats to take out the next creature. And yeah, time your safekeeping. Okay, hopefully Villas can stick around, although it's not going to be too difficult to replay. Opponent with a Quandrix command to bounce Villas, so yeah, that's a pretty effective answer. Take five, don't draw any cards. Exquisite blood to draw. So if we lose a life to Ramana Ruins, get a discount, can play four mana Exquisite Blood, one mana, go for the throat. I guess that looks okay, and then play the Tapped Cliffs, and then next turn we should have seven mana plus one discount from Ramana Ruins to replay Villas. And then the Exquisite Blood can gain us some life back. Now we could see Tanazir Quandrix. No plus one counters anywhere. So they're gonna play Horn Beetle first. And Virtue of Persistence could be an answer to the Horn Beetle. No creatures in graveyard to get back. Or we can just uh, replay Villas here, which I think is still the plan. Alright. Our 8-8 flyer is back. And uh, Verazol is next. We'll make five tokens with Horn Beetle here. So that's pretty scary. Okay, so how do we proceed from here? I can use the Rowan trick once again, and then both use Virtue and the uh, Adventure first. Killing Horn Beetle can attack again 8. That seems fine. And I guess we also draw with Villas, finding a Crackle with power. That's also an option. Although we might want to save that for next turn, once we have more mana available. Can use Temple to scry. Do I want Swamp? Not really. I look for some more life loss, perhaps. And then activate Rowan. Could also use Castle to draw and lose more life. Deal with Horn Beetle. Using Castle is not unreasonable. Playing Virtue gives us insurance in case they somehow kill Villas, and at the very least we can get back Nadir Kraken or Horn Beetle. So that seems acceptable. And then if we attack for 8, we also gain 8. And if our opponent attacks back, we draw a lot of cards. So it's not quite as easy for the opponent to hit us back. Opponent with a Lizrog does enter with quite a few counters. So, removing 5 to get 10 counters total, now a 13-13. And I don't think our opponent's attacking us. They are. That would let me draw 6 cards. Okay. And there's certainly some nice options here. Let's say we go for Nadir Kraken. I don't think Horn Beetle does much for me. Let's decline for now and look at our hand. Points at 19. They've got no blockers for Rowan, so we get in for 12. So yeah, we should be able to close out the game pretty easily. Although, a more stylish way of winning the game would be taking 3 here, drawing 3 cards. Now the Kraken wants to be part of the fun. Tap this for life. And then we can activate Rowan for the discount. Pillage for one mana generates two treasures, so that's in that bonus. 
even found Necropotence, but we've already used Rowan's discount, so it's not gonna increase here. So we can Crackle for four. And that'll do it. 20 damage to the face. Alright, so we got to see our Rowan Life Loss deck in action. It's definitely a pain for gain in this deck, and we got to see some sweet combo finishes, especially alongside Necropotence. So overall, the power level of the deck, when it works, can be incredibly high, but it is still a pretty fragile commander. A creature without an entered battlefield ability is going to be pretty weak against some more controlling strategies, packing a lot of spot removal. Against uh, green ramp decks especially, I find myself actually surviving with Rowan, and then we can usually do some powerful things that can even overpower the fastest starts from the ramp decks, so those are kind of the matchups you're hoping to face with Rowan, but uh, against the more controlling decks it's usually difficult to pull off anything at all. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.